South County EMS Board of Oversight meeting on November 20th, 2018 at 5.02 p.m. Great. Call to order. Uh, last meeting's minutes, September 26th, 2018. Motion. Second. Any discussion? Nope. Good minutes. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 How about a uh, director's <coughs> report? Oh! Nice lengthy one. That you're well, just... if you're looking for a director's report, I've got a director's report. Yes, you do. Uh, first off, I want to uh, give a thank you to Pioneer Training Incorporated of Northampton, Massachusetts, for donating the chairs that everybody is sitting in right now. Oh, oh nice. very nice. Yes, and awesome. uh, also a uh, perfect table for our um, equipment room that we can put bags on and, and go through bags and restock nice. and clean. So it was a perfect for that. They, uh, they're in Northampton, they do, uh, I wrote it down, databases, websites, and office automation. They got our name from um, Conklin Office Furniture. They bought mm -hmm. new furniture and Conklin said, hey, that old stuff, you should give South County a call. Oh, how nice. Yeah, so, um, That's great. so, so thank you to Conklin yeah. as well for, uh, for wow. making that referral. That's fantastic. I know. That sounds great. And where did we get the big conference table? Uh, W.B. Mason's. Yes. Very nice. Uh, yeah. I yeah, that was uh, some. It's on sale. Yeah. Yep. Perfect. Great. All right. Well, it's really nice. <laughs> yep. It's nice to have a full site. Yeah, yeah, I know. It Spread out. So, uh, uh, outreach. We've been increasing our outreach stuff uh, recently. We just. Sunderland PD hosted a Stop the Bleed class, which South County EMS uh, taught uh, along with Bay State Health. And that is major hemorrhage, tourniquets, mm -hmm. wounds, things like that. Um, it stemmed from acts of violence, but really kind of parlayed into this idea that we're teaching everybody CPR because you need CPR before help can get there. We teach people how to do defibrillators and we teach people how to do choking because other things are going to die before help can get there. And also bleeding. You know, right. if somebody accidentally cuts themselves or something like that. So this is a big push to train not just first responders, but also lay people in stop the bleed and hemorrhage control. So I am an instructor now. We have access to the training aids. They're very expensive, but FERCOG has purchased some, so we can borrow those to Great. train people as well as community 911 uh, training, uh, which we have a relationship with. So we're already coordinating with the school staff mm -hmm. um, in the local schools to offer the stop the bleed training for their staff. And then we're going to host some community-based ones just open to anybody uh, after that um, and David our resident CPR first aid instructor is coordinating with the local Girl Scout troop to get um, them all certified in CPR and first aid and uh, nice. we're going to do that, Isn't that nice? um, uh, South County EMS will provide David um, and there's a cost associated with the cards, mm -hmm. um, but we'll borrow the equipment. So the cost to the Girl Scouts will just be the price of the cards. So Perfect. South County EMS will, will do the other stuff. That's wonderful. Yeah, it's I great. Say, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited about that. Oh, yeah, I'm, it's, it's great to be able to provide really the love, stuff. I love the fact that you're reaching out to the kids. Yeah. That's really good. Um, I've also been uh, working closely re recently with some sister agencies uh, about... Our new community EMS regulations, how can we really leverage that to, to make a big difference? Um, and I've been working with the Opioid Task Force and their partners. We're really acknowledging that opioid um, substance use disorders, not just opioids, but you know okay. any sort of mm -hmm. um, substances, um, is a public health problem. And yeah. because of that, we have a lot of negative interactions, either on law enforcement or on the EMS side, you know, we have to respond after the fact with Narcan or these people are going through the jail mm -hmm. and the criminal justice system. So we're going to try to work together to figure out the best way to treat it as a public health concern and have South County EMS work alongside our law enforcement partners, um, both preemptively um, and also follow up. So with the jail, they have people that might have been incarcerated for drug related crimes that we can follow up after the fact, touch base with them and really be an asset for them. So not... Um, not punitive, but really like supportive right. and, and try to get people back on. So this is kind of like really in the infancy right now. Um, it's, it's been a, a huge um, success down in Hampshire County. So we're trying to bring it up to Franklin County. So right. no announcements yet. We're still trying to figure out what it all looks like, but uh, hopefully that'll be coming soon. 
and uh, oh, in the schools, I've been working with uh, the school nurses union 38 to develop basically a standardized transfer form. So when we go, they call 911 because they have a kid who needs to go to the hospital or something like that. <laughs> it's easy to pick a kid up. Uh, the difficult is the difficult part is that handoff. So mm -hmm. has their parents been contacted? What medications are they on? Who can we expect to, you know, to meet them? Those types of things. So we've standardized a form mm -hmm. now across the schools that will allow that handoff to be more smooth. Mm -hmm. So that's this fantastic. is the kid. Here's all the information that we can focus on talking to the kid and, and right. getting them instead of trying to gather that information. That's great. So yeah, that's all great. Uh, we have to talk about the large scale tabletop exercise that mm -hmm. um, what is it now? Great Hydro? What are yeah, they called? Great Hydro. Great hydro? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, well, Steerfield River flooding. And yes, right. So the, they're required because they own the dams and all that stuff to do these large scale exercises. So this one was for the Harriman Reservoir Dam. And no, if, this was for Homeland Security. I got Homeland Security money to yes, do this. Yes, thank so you. So we could practice and yes. get our self organized yes. and know what was going on for when they have to mandate doing it in the relicensing in the spring. Perfect. So right. I, this was at GCC. Yeah, yeah, thank you, Carolyn. Um, this was at GCC. We got like all the towns. Was, was mm -hmm. every 18, town? 18 towns. Were yeah. There. Which was great, was represented. And this is not just public safety, but EMD, public works, mm -hmm. select bodies. Yep. Yeah. Um, there was all kinds of people. Yeah. yeah. So... South County, you know, everybody. Yeah. Uh, South County EMS, uh, we attended, we were happy to attend. Uh, I mean, we represent at least three, I mean, mm -hmm. solidly three communities that are going to be affected by this. Um, and then on a regional level, just with our partners. And we were basically the EMS service yeah. represented there. And being a municipal EMS service means that we can partner with the other towns and our other agencies and and we have that ongoing relationship with them and the citizens can count on us on following through on our plans and, and building off of this experience so it's nice that um, we can do that at South County EMS we're not so much um, beholden to you know profits or something right. like that you know the hospital I don't even know if they showed up uh, if they were represented or yeah, not. Yeah, one person. But you know what was really appreciative is the fact that you were willing to go to that all day yeah. and represent us and, and figure out what we were going to do with road closures and stuff like that. And Sunderland was going to be inundated, so yeah. to sort out how yeah. Sunderland was going to cope. And um, and I'm sorry that um, the National Guard, the Vigilant Guard exercise the following week was a bust for us in the sense that you had volunteered to participate and be the service yeah. involved. But yeah, I know there was I, some coordination with Vigilant Guard. You know, they, their purpose was to exercise their resources, and it was getting a little complicated. But um, after the exercise at GCC, uh, Laura Lankowski, the Emergency Management Director for Deerfield, she's been following up with myself, the police departments, mm -hmm. trying to figure out how the code red stuff goes and good. and um, standardize scripts and stuff like that. So a lot of good stuff has come yeah. out of that exercise that has branched out, not just right. from a flooding standpoint, yep. but from a preparedness in general. Um, but see. I really wanted you to know, we all appreciate it. Yeah. That. Oh, happy to be the there. Time. Absolutely. <laughs> that's, uh, it was wonderful. That's um, one of the reasons I... enough practice time. Yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. Well, and like I said, it's a benefit of South County EMS that we can participate in mm -hmm. those things. It's, it's yeah. easy and a no-brainer. My, my understanding, the After Action Report will be out um, in December, and then um, the REPC is going to follow up on it, and so that we can work on it between now, or when, December, when we get it, and um, when the spring relicensing happens, mm -hmm. they're going to start that process, and they, right. they are mandated to have a drill. Right. So what we want to do is find out what we want to ask for. Mm -hmm. and we want to be all on the same page and make sure we're really, because this is not, I know people, some people had problems with TransCanada, but really TransCanada was pretty generous with mm -hmm. some of their, um, you know, monies for emergency management and, uh, you know, things like fixing mm -hmm. up along the river. So we need to ask Great Hydro because they have no budget right. and at this moment, and, mm -hmm. that, and that's not acceptable. So we need to be organized yeah. and on the same page, and I think that's going to happen. And but having you there, Zach, and sort of leading the 
whole EMS thing because Conway EMS was there and, the, and I knew the Hilltown one was there but the thing is you're really organized yeah and, and it's very much appreciated so that mm -hmm. we can make sure we get what we need so thank you uh, operationally uh, things are really getting shooken up in the county yeah. recently uh, New England Health Center formerly known as Cozy Corner in Sunderland announced their closure um, and I think regulatory wise they have until January something but last I checked there was they're done and they're closed are, are they full yeah I knew as of like last week there were there was only one or two left so I guess they are done um, they they were our only skilled nursing facility in our coverage area, Deerfield Center and Waitley, um, our primary service area, I should say. Uh, but they, I, I pulled the numbers just to see what the impact was. On average, we went to uh, New England Health Center twice a month over the past year. So their closure, we don't anticipate to, to make any sort of significant change in, in our operations here or anything like that. So, um, yeah. That's right. a long time that that was open. I, that yeah, was I mean. a very long time. As long as I can remember, yeah. probably uh, probably even longer than that. Seventy years. Yeah. Is that right? Wow. Uh, uh, I've talked about this before. You know, meeting with the other Franklin County EMS agencies, be it fire departments, the private services, the standalone EMS mm -hmm. third services, about what does kind of a cohesive plan for the county look like, um, and that was born out of MedCare being less and less available um, and other South County, Coleraine, Northfield, these other services kind of picking up the slack. Uh, well, MedCare just announced, what was this, last week, um, that they are being bought by American Medical Response. They are the, American Medical Response or AMR is the largest private for-profit EMS service in the country. Their local division is based out of Springfield. And so it's the Springfield division of AMR will be taking over the Greenfield and Springfield divisions of MedCare. There's a meeting tonight um, that I will be going to being hosted by MedCare. I don't know if there'll be any representatives of AMR there. Our understanding is that any sort of arrangements, either verbal or written, that MedCare has made with the communities north of us for coverage and abilities and resources will be honored through the end of the fiscal year, June 30th. Um, that is the rumor. I haven't heard that right. from the horse's mouth yet. And then even if that is truth, then beyond July 1st, I don't know what that means. Um, AMR is a for-profit agency, so you know they do a valuable service and everybody who works there are dedicated public safety professionals, but I don't know from a business standpoint what AMR's plans are for Franklin County. And um, MedCare is the primary EMS service for Greenfield, Turner's, wow. Bernardston, Leiden, oh. Shelburne Center. You know, so like there, there's a huge impact up there. Um, we've seen um, a 10% increase in our call volume every single year, uh, and it's mm -hmm. still going up. Um, and it's it's kind of fluctuating. I think August was our busiest month as far as going mutual aid or, or doing um, backups for other services. It's trickled back down. Uh, we're covering all of our calls down here. We are, we are staffed and able to cover our calls. The question is whether or not a vacuum of EMS coverage is going to occur north of us and what that's going to do to a county as a whole. Um, so. We're still trying to figure that out. Um, we are staffed. Our job is to cover Deerfield, Sun, and Wheatley. And any sort of additional things we do are on top of that. So I don't want anybody to worry that we're not going to be available to cover our own calls or things like that. That is still our, our primary goal. But um, it certainly changes the dynamic. Um, so yeah. I just want you to know I'm really appreciative of you being on top of that because I have been worried that that will impact not only our staffing, but mm -hmm. pulling our, our primary yeah. ambulance away from our, our own communities. Yeah. So um, I appreciate you really trying to talk to people and go to meetings, and I know it's a pain. Yeah. 
like you know running out tonight, but it really will have a huge impact. Well, and MedCare is our primary backup. So when we have multiple calls coming in, multiple patients, like in a car accident situation yeah. or something like that, they are our first call. So if if AMR can you know swoop in and no change in service, then right. everything I'm saying right now, you know, we can yeah. laugh about later. Um, but if they do decrease decrease their service, that means that our dynamics will change, and it might mean that our backup is coming from North Northampton or Amherst or Hatfield, and might be further away. Or you know, those are all things that we're going to have to um, look at in the future. But so, how, how many calls a year does Greenfield have? <clears throat> it's a great question. I don't know. So why don't we why don't we look at expanding? If you're if you're talk if you're talking about. I mean, you're in a position in this location to be able to handle that, right. and then you'd be able to, then and they would they would come on and they would pay their their share, right? Yeah. The problem I, is, you, or at least I see it as a problem is you're not just picking up Greenfield; you'd have to pick up their the whole service area if you're really. Well, it depends. It, yeah, it, you can negotiate. Yeah, that's right. But but I mean why why wouldn't you, why wouldn't you look at why wouldn't I mean gr Greenfield's contiguous mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right yep. it's I mean, it's easy for us to get to um, I don't know how many calls they have but find out how many calls right. they have and and start offering the service there right that that was our goal right originally well our our goal was to be self self funding that's absolutely true. right but if you if we if we're gonna get called. And again, it, it, I, you'd have to see how it plays out. Right. Right. But I wouldn't right. be adverse to, to look in, looking at an expansion in that direction. I mean, if, 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 the, if the station was over in Sunderland, that's not practical. But if the station's, yeah. you know. Yeah. Let's see what AMR's got in mind. Yeah. 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 We'll I, see. I mean, yeah. No wonder what they'll charge Greenfield and, you know, I mean, if they're for, for profit. You don't know what their level of service is going to be. I know. I'd be curious to see how it plays out, though. Yeah. 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 Well, I think I certainly EMS coverage is in flux in the whole county, so I think yeah, yeah there are opportunities there. That I, I but but I, I just think I, I and, and I've talked to someone. Someone just, I, I just said this before. Putting your ambulance in Greenfield doesn't make sense because you're you're close to the hospital. You're very close to the hospital. So you're in, and so you you should be going towards the hospital, right. not away from the hospital, but go back to the hospital. So it makes sense for our look with our location right now mm -hmm. to be able to offer that service. Um, do you think that we'd have more intercept fees um, in general? Well, I mean that's because do they run paramedic or do they run basic? They run all paramedics. The paramedics, yeah. I mean, and that's that's all. I need to pull all of our agreements and look at that. It might be the type of, like, we are third in line for intercepts to Conway. And, mm -hmm. and all of, any sort of agreements we have put us very low on the list because we still have to worry about our own mm -hmm. services. So they try MedCare in Northampton before mm -hmm. they come to us and ask if we're available. So it might be the type of thing where, oh, you know, if, if, the, if we know we're going to do this many intercepts on average, and this is what we'll charge you on average, and we know what that income is going to look like, then you can start making those calculations about, you know, what that does as far as needs for, you know, staffing or something like because that. Because, I, I mean, I look at the intercepts, that that is, you know, that's money, probably money-making compared yeah. to other situations. Right. So, um, that might be what we'd want to do is to probably increase intercepts maybe instead of offering general service. But we'll... we'll Let's see how well. Yeah. Out. Well, and Greenfield Let's Fire has a BLS ambulance, right. you know, right. so they, they get yeah, they um, might they, they might, might up their game. Yeah, yeah, they might up their game as as is Turner's Falls, isn't it Montague? Which is it Turner's, Turner's Falls? Turner's Falls Fire, Fire District. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And I don't know what their arrangement with Montague Center is, or whether that's going to yeah. change now that you know. I don't know. Hmm. But all right. I'll have to look at. Uh, segueing into equipment and. Uh, capital stuff um we were talking at the last meeting in september about our fleet um and not long after that our 2007 ford got stranded at the pumps um we have three trucks so when that truck got stranded and, and with no start and had to be towed and repaired then you know we still had two trucks to stay in service it didn't mean that we had to bring our 2010 international back up to second line service i had moved that down to third line but um it just kind of re reinforced 
the issue as I see it. Um, I've crunched, crunched the numbers, um, and my recommendation is that, like I said at the September meeting, that instead of replacing the international in fiscal year 2021, we do it this upcoming fiscal year of 2020. Um, so that would be as of July 1st. We have the retained earnings money available um, to make a, a little bit larger contribution in fiscal year 20 to meet that um, requirement, the money requirement, and it's not going to impact the assessments or anything like that. And our... Would we have the ability to move the box off? So I looked into that. Um, the new truck is going to be significantly less expensive well, I say significantly, about $40,000 less, less expensive than the last one we bought because we have all that equipment. We have the power load, we mm -hmm. have the safes, we have the suction stuff. All that stuff can be moved over um, if we get a new truck. So the, so the uh, estimated price of a new truck with a new chassis, Ford chassis, is $250,000. The remount. So the remount is possible... Um, but it has to go onto another international. They cannot remount that box onto a Ford chassis. I want to go back to the Ford chassis. Um, it means our repair is just in Greenfield. It's been very reliable. Um, and the international repairs are more expensive. It's been less reliable. I have to go to, down to West Springfield every time. The other benefit of a new truck, we would make it a sister to our most recent one, which was a focus on patient safety, crew safety, mm -hmm. um, modern standards. Yeah. The box coming off the international is from 2010, 2009. So all those standards are a decade old already. So we would just be moving that to a new chassis and we really wouldn't be- Well, what would be the- lose it for a while too. Yeah, yeah, that's true, yeah. What would our um, uh, turn-in price be with if we leave the box on then? And we just turn it in? Uh, the estimation is somewhere between seven to twelve thousand dollars of trade-in on a on a working ambulance if we give them the international and they give us a, a sister truck to this um if we do a remount we lose that trade-in um they don't they consider that that chassis not, not worth anything they're not going to give us any so i uh, so the last uh ambulance was what 268.5, or that was the quote? No, I think all well, in, it was in. like 285. Was it 285 yeah. at the end? Um, but that included $20,000 worth right. of the power load. All you know, the like power all, loads all, You know, the radios, yeah. all that stuff. So um, All that trust stuff would be transferred. Would be right. transferred over. So we're only paying for the ambulance and the chassis, not everything that goes in it. But if you're going to transfer all this stuff, why would it still be $260,000? The box itself is... Um, a hundred and ninety thousand and change, hundred ninety three thousand for the price of the ambulance and building the ambulance, and then you purchase the chassis separately. And I think state bit list on the chassis is forty. I think on the F four fifty is on the mass state bid list. So you know two thirty two forty, um, and then I did a two percent, and then um, I think. I've got all the numbers worked out. Um, I added like another 10,000 basically of inflation wiggle room and you know whatever uh, problems we might run into. Uh, you need to educate me a little bit because if, if you're saying that all the equipment can be transferred, I mean the aluminum box is the aluminum box. If they're going to transfer everything, I don't see why you couldn't use the same box. It's, it's that box is built for the international chassis. The dimensions, the layout, all that stuff. Um, the equipment no, meaning just, uh, just the power load and the part that right. is on it. Yeah. And then you still got all the wiring and everything in there. Yeah, it's not worth jerry rigging it. I've the other benefit of doing a sister truck is it decreases, I mean, you've got commonality between equipment. So when a provider jumps from one to the other, everything's in the same spot. So training is easier, cognitive load is decreased. And the research shows that when you decrease those extra stressors in, in an environment like rendering medical aid, errors go down, you, you get better, better patient outcomes. So really, the way I see it is for the you know, $40,000, $50,000 you'd save on the remount, you're, you're buying yourself a 10-year-old box that isn't up to the standard on another international. Um, and... I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't, I, I mean, I don't know that much, 
I am 100% upfront with that. But that international, from what I understand, just going to different meetings, hearing about everybody complaining about international ambulances. Yes. That was a, it's a lemon. It's not worth um, keep repairing. Um, and everybody, it seems like, when you talk to people, um, the Ford is the better, better vehicle. And so it makes sense to switch and not just hold out for one more year. Because we're, we're investing money that we, for a, a machine that's down a right. lot. Right. That, that's what, what bothers me, because it, it costs... You're throwing good money at that. Yeah, well, it costs time and money for staff, and it's mm -hmm. disruptive, and you have to adjust, and it, it just... Did you check into the amount of time it takes to swap a box? Uh, I don't know it off the top of my head, but you're right. I mean, it's it's months. Three or four months. Yeah. Um, See, that doesn't even make sense. I don't think the 2010 safety standards are up to what the new boxes got. Remounts make sense when you have a relatively young truck that's been in an accident. You know, and so like the chassis is bent or totaled and then you remount the box because everything is relatively recent on it and you put it on the same chassis. That's when those make sense because you're without that vehicle anyway. Um, for replacing a 10-year-old ambulance on an unreliable chassis, I don't did see Conway that. Did Conway do that on their last truck? Didn't they remount? Yeah, I think they did, they did do a remount. I don't know how they, what they think of it now, but... <laughs> Yeah, I don't. I, I don't think it's especially since it's going on another international. I don't think you can justify it. Conway's was at least closer in size to what they replaced it with. Went from one brand to another brand, but it wasn't going from the international size down to the Ford. Maybe maybe we could we could advertise it ourselves. You know, put it out for a bid and, and get more money back. Yeah, I don't know what the to trade yeah. in. You can try but, it either way. It doesn't cost you yeah, any more money. Yeah, yeah. Because they can just put it out. And I don't have a quote on that trade-in yet either. I mean, that was that was like the off-the-record ballpark estimate from the person, but you know, yeah. nothing in writing. So. Well, I I don't. I mean, my personal feeling is not to invest any more money and time and hassle into trying to keep this international going. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm supportive of that. I don't know how you all feel. Do you feel the same way? Well, I, I just worry that we're going to we're going to buy another ambulance, so it's, it's after one after one one after the other. So we're going to get way out way out of our buying, and then then we're going to end up with a uh, 2007 versus a 2010, and we're going to be we're going to be hearing in a couple of years. Well, we got to replace a 2007 because it's a 2007, and it's now 2020. You know, and and so. So when when's when's the prognosis or when when do we believe that we're gonna replace the two thousand seven? You can tell me next year. Well, what's the talking? rotation? Do we have the rotation? Because I don't have my capital. Well the whole the whole fleet we adopted. Be, the rotation will be three, four years from now. The whole the whole fleet that we adopted was all yeah. too old anyway, so we were gonna <laughs> run into this where the rotation initially was every five years. Um, so the front line truck was always, you know, five or under. Second line truck was always ten years or, or under. And then the third line truck, if it was still working and reliable, would be a maximum of 15. With our call volume increasing the way it is, I don't know if it makes sense to go to a four year. Um, but either way, the trucks that we inherited are all, I mean, be it a 2010 or 2007, <laughs> next year, both of those trucks, you know, would be a year older and... And I'm worried about the next rotation, though. Are you going to have them all bunched together within a couple yeah. of years? Yeah. How often, are, yeah, how, how else can you stretch out the I, I was just going to say, we're, we're, keep your fingers crossed and stretch them out. Yeah, yeah. well, yeah. I just put four grand into that old e box and it's running better than ever, so. Yeah. Um, um, well, we, we need to fuss with the rotation and, and the usage schedule yeah. so that we can stretch it out. So maybe we can have, maybe people could think about it. And have some ideas uh, and, and, on and how, I, how we could rotate the use. I just don't. Want, I just don't want to see us to replace three last two, year, this year, and next year. I know. And then in ten and years, I, and I already, I already hear again. that. And, and because th then, then that means we're keeping one truck for fifteen plus years. Right. I know, but if it's still we're not in going. a good situation where we're putting good money into that. Angle, and, so. and, and, and if you think about it, if you just look, listen to what Jack was talking about. For scheduling, he wanted one five years, one ten years, one fifteen, right? 
So in five years, what happens in five years if we want to keep our rotation? Well, we should be trading in a truck that, or replacing a truck that has five or six years of use on it. That doesn't make sense either. <clears throat> well, it, I think it depends really on the, the history of the vehicle. If the truck's running good, you know, I, I don't see it. I mean, yeah. I mean, and you've been happy with the Fords. Has anybody else been happy with those Fords? They've been lasting longer? I mean, I mean, I, I know 10 years out, your technology changes. Yeah, but I, the Ford chassis we've been very happy with, and it is serviced in Greenfield. And mm -hmm. we've been happy with the service mm -hmm. we receive. It's fast, it's timely, and it's well done yeah. and the amount of time it takes to pick the truck up or drop it off when it needs an oil change 10, ten minutes right. you know yeah. and then we and we're picking up drugs at the hospital when we go up there anyway so right. um, yeah. yeah the international goes to West Springfield and that's just so happening. for for routine right. service that means driving it down to West Springfield and I take my personal vehicle and I pick the person up and drive them back um, or if it's a tow it's a heavy-duty wrecker mm -hmm. To West All Springfield, related. so. Yeah. Well, Whaley's old truck was 15 years old. That was a Ford 450. Yeah. We had lasted. minimal problems with that. Yeah. In yeah. those 15 years. I mean, but I, you do. I agree with you. You need to kind of figure out how to stretch those out past yeah. five years, then, because I, you're going to get all bunched up, and every three, you know, every so often you're going to have to buy three in a row. Well, well I know, sense. like John Petrick on the police cruisers, he's had a couple <clears> lemons, and he's worked the rotation so you can get rid of the lemons, and you stretch out the life mm -hmm. of the ones that were not that were had no problems and and just going to homeland security meetings and stuff where everybody talks about their yeah. equipment yeah. it seems like the international that international what was it transmission problems or something there was something wrong with it the, the, the transmission it gives us trouble on that it's yeah. our cooling I mean, system it, is giving us trouble was, yeah people were complaining about different things and how everybody's going back to the ford because International made a big effort to get the business, but their equipment yeah. wasn't any good, and there was something wrong with <laughs> with them in general. But, I mean, I don't really know that much about it, but I, I, I'm i like, well, if, if the 2007 is working, I think we could try to baby it and a little bit longer. And seeing as the third, third truck. Third yeah. lineup, right, yeah. 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 Keep that you know, longer. Because all we're doing is rotating a year earlier than... And, and I just, I, I, I think it's a waste of our money to keep investing in the... And try and keep that 2007 longer so that you can stretch yeah, that so out and yeah. get you back in a little and, bigger. And keep that third line and then figure out a way to rotate the two, try to stretch out mm -hmm. somehow the, the distance yeah, between I think, the I, two. I think the, we, and we discussed this last meeting, I think the International is the one that... I mean, it's granted, it's a little bit newer, but that's yeah. the one that blows coolant lines on the way to calls. That's unacceptable. Yeah. The old right. E-Series, you know, the No Star got tracked down to, um, you know, an old mechanical fuel pump. We replaced that in some glow yeah. plugs, and it's running much better now. I think I, I have more confidence in, in extending the longevity of the 2007 Ford, especially as third-line service right. for detail service, um, if we have two other vehicles that are reliable <clears throat> for you know, primary and secondary what, service. What if in a year, um, say you took over Greenfield, um, does that mean adding another ambulance? Or, or can you cover it with two new and a work, real old one? You'd have to work the numbers. Yeah, have to work yeah, I, yeah I wouldn't be able to, to say how anything. You'd, how you'd be able to deal with that. Not that we would even be doing it. I'm just curious, like in a year from now, I don't know, something falls Our call volume either. dictates one and a half ambulances right now, gotcha. if that makes any sense. Okay. So we've got, if we have two, you know, we, we have capacity for another half ambulance. Right. But then you're playing, you know, like, when is that going to be? What times a day? Of this course. Step. Um, so it's more confusing. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, like Carolyn said, you'd really have to crunch some numbers to see yep. what that looked like. We have capacity to do more, like Zach says, one and a half. Gotcha. And and you kind of want to stay under the two because if you're at two, then you have no extra capacity to do the blips that yeah. might happen. And the, and but the interception. That, but to go to a third, you know, a third ambulance, staff a third ambulance. It's a whole lot more money. Man, that's a that's a huge commitment. Yeah. Well, and we're I, we're staffing that second ambulance eight hours a day, seven days a week. Um, gotcha. basically so like so there's you, our you half add, yeah right. you, you know so right you, and, and I, I crunched the numbers for this budget looking at what it would look like to add 
you know, 16 hours a day, seven mm -hmm. days a week, or, you know, additional staff on the weekends. Right. And, and so I, it's, it, it's not insignificant amount of money, even at a mm -hmm. per diem. And it's but. a little bit of a risk. Like, yeah. So right. I, you know, just curious. We gotta, we gotta so. talk about it some more and, and get a more of a handle on what's happening. Yeah. yeah. It's not it's that I disagree. Oh, I, I, trust, I, I trust, I just, I just see it happen. I, I said, yeah. you're at a 2007 now. If you just listen to what he said, you want one five, you want less than five, you want less than ten, less than fifteen, but it isn't going to happen. No. Not if you that replace one this year, and, and I and I can almost guarantee you that that to me, I think for my my personal opinion, I think your fleet fleet availability is rotten. It's it's I I would say it's unacceptable. You know, you shouldn't be breaking down at the rate that oh, we do. Oh, I know. That, that's, that's why I want to get rid of it. I think it makes sense to get rid of it. I mean, that 2007... Oh, man, I did that wrong. Um, that was a good end once until I gave it to you. <laughs> no, yeah, but I think... Why don't you ask me what I inherited yeah, on the yeah, um, The equipment, it yeah. seems like the, the repair work on it hasn't... If you look at the history, I, and again, I don't have the right in front of me, but when we were talking about it, it wasn't that bad once right. you got that. Well, that and the 15-year mark on the 2007 is 2022. <clears throat> so, I mean, if we're thinking 15 years, if we're expecting 15 years, and, and I had said, you know, if that third truck is reliable to 15 years, then, you know, we would keep it operational. So yeah. I think, especially third-line duty. Um, That's... We have enough stuff on it, so even if it's just doing detail to an event or whatever, it, it's still more than adequate, right? I mean, it meets all this new safety standards, doesn't it? Mm. It's got the power load stretcher, so the stretcher is secured mm -hmm. in it. It's not the the restraint system for the providers, you know, is just lap belts. That's not up to modern mm. standards, things like that. But if it's doing details of the football right, game, if it's that. doing show and tell, like th for those things, I mean, we're not, if we're not typically transporting patients in it, um, then funny. there's less chance that the, the lack of those things would be an issue. Right. Um, yeah. Okay. Well. What else you got? Well, well that p segues right into my, my other mention, which came up at um, the last meeting, which was our fleet is all ambulances, which means that when we need to go do anything else, take a Lucas to the scene of a incident or go out to the highway for a tanker rollover or pick up equipment down at Bay State, our options are either take an ambulance to do it, which takes it out of service and puts more wear and tear on a vehicle that is expensive to maintain, or take a personal vehicle to do it. Uh, and sure, we can get reimbursed for putting personal, for mileage on our personal vehicles, but now we're asking personnel to use their vehicles in an emergency or something like that. So we're, you know, there's safety and liability concerns. So looking at the retained earnings and, and with the application towards the FY20 budget to keep the assessments you know, within a few thousand dollars of last year and with the replacement of a truck a year earlier, we still have $40,000 that uh, I recommend that we put towards a rapid response or community EMS vehicle. So as we go out and we do these new initiatives, instead of taking the third line ambulance to a house to do a follow up with somebody who's been discharged for an overdose, we can take something either a little more subtle, a little more appropriate and less expensive um, to that house. Uh, that $40,000, I, I looked into this, um, on the state bid list, that would buy a new Ford utility, uh, bare bones, mm -hmm. or it would purchase a used EMS specific vehicle with compartments built out in the back for bags and equipment and stuff like that. I don't know which one makes more sense. Who in their um, right mind would get rid of EMS stuff unless it was a lemon? Well, I... I'm not, that's the only reason I wouldn't be so excited about getting something used. Yeah, I, but my because point being, you know, like this is, like um, you know, this is the money we have left over. I'm not looking for anything extravagant or fancy. We're talking either bare bones or used. So, um, 
I first, I don't ever think that we have money left over. <laughs> you know, it, it's, to me, it's always overcharged. But what, what, do you, what exactly are you going to try to be a little more specific? What would you use this vehicle for? I mean, what I'm getting yeah. is you, if you use your personal vehicles now and you do this and you do that, something like a Ford Explorer would be acceptable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, that's what you're looking for. That's exactly what right. I'm looking that for. That kind yeah. of SUV age yeah. kind of thing. Um, do we, have, we don't have to buy it off the bid list. We could buy it, like Kip got our um, building inspector vehicle for a huge discount at the end of the year. Yeah. Do you, do you think you could do... Oh, yeah, you could. You, I mean, that's the thing. John went to the state bid list and he wanted $35,000 to buy another cruiser. And we had gotten that money. And I just went to Mark Hot Ford and we got a leftover vehicle and we paid 22000 for it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's really, it's a really nice. Great, yeah. I, I mean, it's. I, so I don't so care where it comes from. I was just looking, you know, try to get some numbers as an idea. What we're do you looking think at. you mm -hmm. could try to do another, Why? find another good pl price? Yeah. See it's if we could find something left over, at yeah. left over at the end of the year. Well, I, I would ask what you need for a vehicle. Oh no, I know, but that's kind of what I was. I, yeah. Right, I agree with you, Chip. I, I, I mean, I, just, I, I, I just think, you know, when I say, well, you got to get somebody to take the garbage, Jack. I, if you need somebody to take the garbage, you can't get it, please let me know. I'll come over with my truck and I'll take the garbage. I, I'm sure I get a Deerfield sticker for the day. Well. Or if the, 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 if the town of Deerfield <laughs> can't, after paying $36,000 a year for rent here, if they, if they can't have the truck come by and throw it, uh, throw the trash on here. I don't think we're here, talking trash. I, I, I think I, that that can be done. Right now, the, the town of Deerfield Highway Department, when they're available, they come over with a pickup and they take our garbage to the Perfect. transfer station. Um, we, if it's not today, it could be tomorrow. It is an indication right. of a thing that... As a large department, you know, just another thing that we can't. It, well, we're not. I, I, but self-sufficient is the right word. But. I think that's a problem throughout local municipal government. Is that you? Is, is everybody thinks that they're a, an independent, an independent uh, entity? We're not. We work together, and 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 and, that, and you should be finding a way. And you should be finding a way. And we say this all the time to the school. So I'm going to say it to here at EMF. We should find a way to try to maximize our savings. Well, we, we much to my dismay, we just sold. Uh, uh, Don't tell me. Yeah, yeah for two thousand dollars to another town, cruiser, mm. uh, Ford Explorer. I was told I wanted nothing to do with that. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, well, I've been inquiring about well, hand-me-downs and other departments yeah. and things like that, and yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. These, these people in Gill are, are throat the death of it. Well, compared to what they, <laughs> but but those are those are things that I I, I think, and, and again I understand that you're 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 a separate entity. I, I think your your South County is in in, a, in the best of all position because it deals with three towns, mm -hmm. and 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 the availability of three towns, and 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 you know Bobby Bobby Hearn when when Bobby Hearn was had started to have his guys do. Uh, um, needed inspections at, at our lo local facilities, he got a leftover police cruiser and had somebody put some paint on it and became it became red and they did that for a while un mm -hmm. until they found out what they need. Maybe that's, I mean, so s Whiteley sells a cruiser, Suggles sells a cruiser, Deerfield sells a cruiser. You, I can guarantee you Leverett, Leverett or Shootsbury just took it, it was $2,000. Somebody going to buy that cruiser for $2,000 Put a little money into it. Going to sell it for five or six thousand dollars. That's what the person that bought the cruiser told me he's going to do. He says, "I just flip them." So why wouldn't we do the same thing? And and we, it, it's okay to be frugal, you know, and and to find out. And and I I agree with Kip when you say you have leftover money. I don't really say that's leftover. That that's why you can you can have our tax payer, You can give that. You don't give it back, but you can be a little more conservative on on how you spend that money that's in that that area. I, Zach just misspoke. He he knows it's not left over. We we have multiple things that we could be doing. Absolutely. But I think Deerfield gets rid of a cruiser every single year. Yeah. You know. And, uh, and, and maybe maybe you have it three or four years or two years or three years. But to understand, you, you know, how how often do you take it to a rollover? How often do how often do you take it for 
you know, like, well, sir, it sounded like you're servicing the, the, the international every week. <laughs> so you're taking it, taking it down to West Springfield. But how often, and, 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 and don't get me wrong, I do not personally think that we should be using personal vehicles because of the liability that, that we get into. Agreed. I agree to that. You know, I, 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 I just, for whatever reason, that, that's my thing. So, so sure, so maybe, maybe we look at It'd be nice to have a new truck. I mean, I like new trucks, you know. But uh, I mean, we we have to, we have to, we have to. Would you be able? Would you be able? I can look around. I mean, look, you, you know, with, with car dealers all whatever. the time too. I mean, I, I, I just heard of someone who bought a car like we got for Dick, and it was a big guy, and he bought it. For the price. <coughs> he had the thing for two months, put two hundred miles on it, and traded it in, and he, he lost ten thousand dollars. He lost half, almost half his money. Wow. He just didn't like it anymore and had to get rid of it. Well, so, Ford had to have a big sale on it, and they said, "Look, we'll take it back, but this is all we're going to give you for." It. You know, if we can find something like that, you know, well, let's hunt around. Yeah. See what we can find. Well, uh, I don't know. Do you, yeah, see, do I would do something like that. Do you mind looking because no, you? I really think that we got a wicked good deal on that car, other car, so it would be nice to get another good deal. They're out there. Yeah. And that's a good time of the year to look. Uh, yeah, so we could do that. And what then else? would you would you put that in? F make sure you put that in for December first. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll, yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. Okay. Yeah. Great. Emergency generator. Uh, scheduled for delivery in January. Um, How much you pay for it? <laughs> uh, 8000 How big is it? Big enough for the whole building. <laughs> I'll give you the spec sheet. Um, I just bought one for my whole house. It's uh, 14000 KW. It was $2,300. Totally we are going to run the hot tub. <laughs> um, so installation is going to be coordinated with uh, the Public Works Department in Deerfield and Deerfield Academy. 14000 KW? Yeah. We run the hot tub. And, uh, I have a hot tub. I, you would run the hot tub then. <laughs> um, Normal house is 8,000 kW. And, uh, we've got our um, vinyl walls installed. What are you in the basement, kid? In the bay. Uh, so those are up to protect the wall up there. So the drywall is protected now from water and salt. So that's, that's good. Um, and it's great. And the budget, there's a draft budget dated 11 20 2018. This is, I don't have the. I know. I don't have the updated budget yet. Uh, form, I should say. The updated budget form from. I haven't gone out yet. Yeah, from. So this is, you know, shoehorned into last year's, but it shows you um, trends. Um, it reflects the estimated rent, the $36,000 in the lease agreement, um, and um, the other expenses as estimated for. Um, utilities here, um, building supplies, stuff like that, those are all on the line items. The uh, salary amounts were calculated based on the recommendation from the Deerfield Personnel Committee, which hasn't been voted or ratified or anything like that, but just as a idea as a placeholder. So that is a step increase for all the employees. Um, and then a 2% for anybody who is up against the highest step. Um, so that's what those numbers are calculated on. And you'll see um, a similar application of retained earnings uh, back towards the budget, actually higher than last year. And uh, it comes to uh, an assessment, $5,000 over last year to the towns, a total $636,928 assessed to the member towns. And the breakdown is 329682 to Deerfield, 200484 to Sunderland, and 106762 to the town of Whaley. Um, and version one. Version yeah. one, dated 11-20-2018. And that is no... Um uh, we didn't lower the assessments at all. This is the full assessment, right? I mean, remember last, we always we always decrease the assessments. Yeah, the assessments mm -hmm. went up by five thousand fifty-five dollars. Right. Yeah. But this is before we would pay down any assessments. There from is our, um, from our retained earnings, right? Uh, there we're, is. We're getting the ambulance and 
Where did it go? Yeah. Well, is that the difference then? Um, well, and, then we wouldn't be lowering them, right. probably. Right. Yeah, so the there is... To offset the operational reserves is $100,000, and then there's an additional $131,077 to lower the assessment to the towns. So it's not lower than last year, but it has been decreased by applying $231,077 from retained earnings towards that assessment. Yeah, but that's yeah, revenue like from that. the services, right? Nope, revenue from the services should be, I think, 500000 half a million. And, and we probably should review that. Um, how are we doing on collections and stuff like that? We can talk about the next Collections meeting. are good. Yeah, all that stuff is good. Um, there was still some question about the market, um, uh, mandated insurance, stuff like that. Um, what might happen to reimbursements. So I didn't increase or decrease our estimated revenue from no, no. last year. I kept it the same as, as it was for the last budget. Um, While we're thinking of it, we need to uh, execute that lease too. I don't think that that'll be the next thing coming up. Okay. Yep, that is in the, uh, in the agenda. Um, so, uh, so that's where we are with version one of the budget. Okay. We'll look at it and um, please. So we'll put it on the agenda for next month and um, or whenever we need next yep. and try to figure out what we're going to do to submit formally. Yep, and I, I, I suspect I don't have the um, the benefit costs from Barbara yet, and that's her estimations are always less than what I, I know. estimate. So um, and it's good to be that yep. way. Because it's conservative and that way it... it so did you so with uh, the Hampshire County? Yes. Did you look at Meyer? No, we haven't yet. We haven't done... We haven't started that process. Have you looked at Maya? Is we it are, better? We are with Maya now. We have better, we have better rates. The group insurance? Really? This year. Yeah, but... Uh, are we, have better rate, we have better rates and... and um, we have to get money coming back. Yeah, but they're not guaranteed. I, I don't know. I, I, I'll tell I, you what, pe people... I'm, I'm really worried about them. Maya? For history, yeah, on, on group insurance. Uh, I mean, I don't should, have any should, problem with be, property insurance. With you, should, you should be concerned with, with uh, some of the things that are happening elsewhere, mm -hmm. to tell you the truth. And, 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 and we've heard, and people that are in certain groups have been telling us, oh, you can't go with them, you can't go with them. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, really? Well, what about, so I, I would be careful what okay. people are telling you. And see if they, ha to see if they have any motivation to be telling you stories. Huh. Okay. I'll have to look into that. I mean, my, my is a, my is a, a large organization. Yep. Sounds like a good thing to discuss at the Selectman Association. Yes, I think so. Yes. No, I know. Well. <laughs> You're right, Bob. Yeah, and it's something that we just talk about in January. Yeah. You know, because that's a huge, that is a huge multi, hundreds of thousands of dollar shift. Big. It's so. huge. <coughs> what was it? It's huge. 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 So. With no age. Millions. Huge. Um, uh, if no further discussion dollars. on the draft budget, the lease agreement. As presented last month, everybody had a time to peruse it. Kip, want to give us an overview? Did you have something to do with this? Not really. Kip gave an Some overview. Lawyer, yeah. The lawyer did it. Um, um, I kind of just gave a, the, an overview of what it is. Um, so I would like to look at it just real quick. Because I, yeah, I know this. Yeah, he, wants to check, he wants to check what he wrote. No, I want to check what was in the minutes. That, you know, I said that the rent would not increase in the minutes. It said forever. You did say that. I, well, if I did say that, I meant forever what this lease agreement was. In other words, I think this is for 20 or 25 years or something like that. And it wouldn't change. Don't we have to come back and review it every Shit, no couple of years or something? I don't, no, think, I don't think anybody's going to question you in uh, 25 years. I Although I, guess, I could see, tr I could see Trump coming back and saying, yes. so he's living back I in, told you so. I'm back in Sunderland now. For 25 years, can we? It's only five yeah, years. Yeah, she said we could. It's for five years. Five years. 
but it can be executed further for five additional terms. So it's basically oh, for 25 okay. years. So for the 25 years, All right, it's you know, it, yeah. would, it, it would stay the same. I was going to say, I don't think we have make, to afford Make sure you have okay. Yeah. I, I'll make a note right now. In but I years. put it in quotes. In, 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 yeah. Yeah. in 25 years from now, but six of us are going to get back together. Seven of us. Uh, <laughs> well, that's why I wanted in the minute to say that that's what I we'll meant. Pull this out of the next nursing home yeah. that comes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I hope there's a new one in the area. <laughs> huh? What's your name? <laughs> I remember the win. I can't be always a telling stories. <laughs> I'll entertain a motion. Second. Second. I saw a motion. What is the motion for? To uh, execute the lease. Approved the lease. I don't know. Do we have to approve it? Deerfield's like, we accept must, it. Uh, you know, nice to have a we accept it. One of the best blind. things that I, li I like about this is that so this organization and the towns aren't going to have to figure out where the money comes to fix something. I mean, I, I, it still bothers me that every time in town we're, well, this is, where, how are we going to get the money for this? And I mean, it happens over at the school, it happens at highway garages, it's like, there doesn't seem like there's any force. Well, no, and, and also the money, if something needs to be fixed so that we don't, the building doesn't deteriorate at all. Yeah. Um, it, it, we have the money. You have the money to fix drainage, you have the money to yep. fix <coughs> panels, whatever. Yep. Uh, doors. I, I think it's just me. really nice that this is just for the building. So, I, mean, I, I think it's paint wall should be green. We have money for that. Say, I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's at least it's one, a calm, one it's a calming color. It is a calming color. This is a calming green. This is turkey this, color. Come this on. Color. This is bright and happy. I was in the Palmer Fire Department the other day. I think the same painters painted that as a some of the public safety complex. The same <laughs> blue. Oh, that. yeah. Who's expecting a baby boy? They're trying to get that repainted. Huh? They're trying to get that repainted. The same blue bottle. Must, must, must have been Reinhardt. Yeah. So Tom seconded. I don't know if we could vote on that without having all the members, can we? We have Maybe a quorum. Have, There's a, a quorum. quorum. Yeah, but I'm not going to vote because I think we should have a selectman from each town. You think we'll get that selectman yeah, back fine. sometime? I should have had. We should have had Jonathan call in. Right. From Hawaii. You is that have where Honolulu he's? music in the background. Is, is that where Hawaii? he's? Yeah, he's in Hawaii. Good for him. Till the end of the week, right? Something like that. That's fine. We can pull the next one. We're still sending you the bill. I'm still going to get paid the bill. <laughs> I wanted to. Uh, Anything make, else to come before the board? I have a quick statement that um, this will be my last meeting with South County EMS. Oh my God. I really have enjoyed immensely working with you guys. Um, it's been a real pleasure, real honor to work with you and um, see a, an organization work together regionally with three towns and um, I think you're all in a great spot. Not that I was any help to any of this, but I'm happy that you're you're all on a good sh you're on a good footing and, um, and you know, it's time for somebody else to step in and, and take take the You can't wait until you find your replacement, I'm sorry. You well I'm almost there. <laughs> I'm working Did you on replace that. you? No. I haven't replaced anyone yet. How do you know you this will be your last meeting? Well, you're yeah, right about <laughs> that. Come on. It's like we're doing it every two months, right? So I got two Double months your salary. <laughs> <Yeah, right>. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll stay. You're out of board. <laughs> All right. So, anyways, I'm trying to. Oh, trying so, to I, I would just like to, add, I, if I could, Mr. Chair, I like to, I like to, to add. Um, when we first, uh, when Zach was a point, first appointed director, I was not the biggest supporter of Zach Smith. Not be well, and, and that's on Zach. No. Yeah. No, you don't. Yeah. No, you and, can just and, say and, that. And, that's okay. And, 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 and my and, and, and my reasoning was because of the lack of experience versus the other the other person that was saying. I just like to say that. Um, I have heard nothing but good things about mm -hmm. Zach. I've known that Zach is, uh, um, um, does a very good job of being able to listen to what's being conveyed to him and then take the appropriate actions. Mm -hmm. and, and I think sometimes that's missed by a lot of people. So when we sit around this table, we don't necessarily all have to agree. Um, but we, what we do have to do is we all have to be free to say what we do. And I think Zach does a, a very good job with that. And I think his people mm -hmm. 
um, every person that has commented to me about the crews that come out um, have always been highly um, impressed positive. by yeah. the professionalism yeah. and the knowledge and the care that was given to him to them mm -hmm. and in particular I still go back to the time where the crew went to the, the one home where the person needed a meal cooked for them to me that's what that's what community mm -hmm. um, services like EMS police and fire I think that's what they're meant to do yeah. they're not supposed to isolate themselves they're supposed to be involved they're supposed to be um, no different than um, the outreach that's taking place now is very important. And I think uh, Zach's men and women on, on the crew um, um, respect him as well. Yeah. I, th I think that's important. Absolutely. I, I think that's important. So Zach, I, I uh, want to say, I, I think hiring someone is the, the most difficult thing that we have to do. And I was glad that I was wrong. Um, <laughs> I'm glad that Mark Gilmore set me straight and, <laughs> and uh, just said we needed to take a chance on him. He was, he was right with that yeah, decision. Absolutely. Well, thank You've you. Been that means a lot. Great thank job. you for the opportunity to um, Good job. shepherd us. Yeah, mm -hmm. to try my hand at it. Appreciate it. I just, I really um, appreciate the you know, your response to when we have wild ideas or <laughs> suggestions or whatever. You're it's always common, good common to, to, to um, you know, make sure we have a response to that. And I, I think that's wonderful, Zach. I call you up all the time and I'm saying, what about this? What about that? And you always are good about response. And that's, Very I think that's huge. I, I <laughs> do agree. That's huge. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes. Anything else to come before the board? Yeah, can't motion. Follow that. <laughs> oh, you know what? Can we pick oh, a new date? Oh yeah, we should do that, huh? Um, um, why the last one didn't work? Oh my god! <laughs> no. oh. All right. Um, well, January. How, well, the only I don't mind if we wait till January, but can we try to make it the beginning of January? Current because budgets. I want to make sure we have our budget in. And 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 I'm kind of wondering, Zach, if we could. Um, if you, if you could give us some, maybe an interim update on what yeah. you're finding out about the AMR stuff, because I oh, think yeah. that I will keep you yeah. 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 see an email our, and then maybe kit whatever he finds for a car, that kind of yeah. stuff for I capital mean, just improvement. Maybe you could work with individually with Kip, and then sure. we, we, you could give us some feedback on the M AMR stuff, and you know, it'd just be good to have some more substantial discussion about that, because I'm a little. Mm -hmm. How about January 10th? With, um, Thursday. No works. Yeah, that's fine. January. 10th. Oh no. Oh oh no. Oh, here we go. Oh, here we go. Oh, no no no. January tenth is is um Upper Up and Gill on this on the educational finance. It's rural communities group. Really? Yeah, it's a January tenth. May not matter to him. What time? Um, yeah right. It doesn't matter to me. I mean, well, maybe we can have it earlier. Um, the week before that is the third. Is a Thursday going to be? Uh, is that, no, are you no, still no, going to be hungover? No, that's good. No, we'll, we'll be good. How about the third? That will make me feel more comfortable. Because then we have a little bit more time. I, I just want to make sure our budget is ready for the Finance Committee. We'll start the song and dance on January 3rd. He'll send it out a week or so. Six o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll move it around. <laughs> by the end of January, we'll probably have a meeting. <laughs> okay. Six o'clock, January 3rd, 2019. There's so much stuff going on, but the school financing is really huge. That's the uh, Gil Montague is going to go over the you know, the charter school financing and, right. the, and the foundation formula, and it's a small rural communities group, so we really have to go. I mean, right. honestly, it's important to go. Is that at 6 o'clock in Gil? I, I think it's 6 to 8 in Gil. Um, All right. They're hosting it because uh, Gary Sam Sandecker is the one that has put in most of them. have too many hats. Oh, I know. That's why I'm getting Yeah, but school budget, down. schools are 70% of our budget, so this is like but serious that's not business. Our what? Gil Monty. No, no, no. Entertain no, no, a motion no, to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.